Hey everyone, how's it going? In this video series, we're gonna go over Python classes, why you should use them, what are they, and just kind of a number of different things you can do with them. We're gonna go over inheritance, we're gonna go over uh, class methods, static methods, uh, the dunder methods, which are a little interesting, strange name. Uh, I have the office theme in my head now. Um, but anyways, we're gonna go over classes. So to start out, we're just going to go over the basic class but over the next few videos, we're gonna go over all of those different topics. And you might be wondering, why are we just not doing this in a single big video? And honestly, I just wanna make sure that each video can kind of cover a specific topic thoroughly. So, you know, it's not like a 50 minute video or something like that. So first off, why do we wanna use a class? Well, classes are actually used in so many different programming languages. Uh, if you ever see OOP or OOP, it's not pronounced OOP, but OOP stands for, stands for Object Oriented Programming. And basically what that means is it's the use of classes within the programming language. Classes are used in basically any major programming language you can think of. There are kind of two main types of programming paradigms. Functional, which really just use functions, which is kind of the name, and object-oriented programming, which is, again, like Python, Java, uh, Kotlin, C, C Sharp, uh, so many things, um, so many different things, Python, <laughs> and even JavaScript, so many different things can use classes. The reason you want to use classes is so you can contain your data and functions for that data in a specific place. This allows you to reuse it very easily and also build upon it if you need to build more functionality for it. Some other great reasons to use classes are inheritance and polymorphism, but we'll go over what that is in future videos. Just so we're clear on some of the terminology, a function that is associated with a class is typically called a method. And any kind of uh, variable that is associated with the class is called an attribute. So if you hear me kind of say attribute or method, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking either about the function that's within a class or a variable that is associated with the class as well. All right, let's get to it. All right, so one of the main examples that you usually see when talking about classes is the employee class. If you watch any other YouTube videos, you'll probably see the employee mentioned. But just to kind of mix things up a bit, let's change it up. In our case, we're gonna go over the Pokemon class. So we're going to create a class called Pokemon. So in order to do that, we can just say class Pokemon and press enter. Uh, and we're just gonna type pass here. Pass just means that we're kind of just skipping the rest of the implementation for this, um, but this is still totally valid. So we're just saying this is kind of like as though we're putting something here, but it's not being counted for anything. Then what we can do is we can create a version of our Pokemon. So let's just call poke, uh, bulb equals Pokemon and then bulb dot uh, name equals Bulbasaur, sore, uh, bulb dot type equals grass. I know he's also poison, but we'll whatever. Uh, HP equals 45. All right, so we have some pretty interesting stuff here. Um, and now let's print off what bulb is. All right, so if we wanna go ahead and print out, out bulb here, we're gonna see that it is of type Pokemon. And if we decide to print bulb dot name, we can also see that we actually get Bulbasaur because we've set the name of the Pokemon to be Bulbasaur. Now this is great, right? We can create as many Pokemon as we want and we can see if we print out Bulb that the type is Pokemon. So sounds correct to me, right? But one of the issues with this is that we can't really use this code very easily, right? Anytime we wanna create a new Pokemon, we have to type whatever the, we have to create a version of the class and then we have to set the name, the type and the HP, right? It would be much better if we could just pass it to the class and they can kind of just deal with it for us. So let's do that. So instead we're gonna set it so that we can set the, the name, the type and the HP within its constructor. Now, in order to do this, we then create a def underscore underscore init underscore underscore and pass self. And then we're gonna pass name, type, and HP. Now, 
So what is self? Well, self can actually be named anything you want, but if you ever see any classes created in Python, it's probably gonna use the word self. It's not actually a keyword, but self is kind of what is used. So you probably should just use self. Now, self is actually a reference to the class itself, the object of the class. So why is that important? Well, self is actually the first parameter to any kind of method within a class. And that's because in any type of class method, you want to be able to reference other parts of a class. Probably. We'll get to why that's a probably later. So what can we do with this? Well, in this case, we can say self.name equals name. And we'll just do the rest for this. Just type and self.h self .hp equals hp. Okay, great. So we could actually make this like like Pokemon name, P name, or whatever we want. But so they don't have to match this exactly, but you typically want them to. So what is this actually doing? Well, this is actually making it so that the name within the object, this new attribute we're assigning for our object is now being created or in instantiated. And we're assigning it the value of name, which is passed in, which in this case is Bulbasaur. Now, if we then say uh, bulb.name equals Bulbasaur, it's actually going to reset all of this. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. And let's go ahead and run this. So we can see here, we now have the exact same result. We still have Bulbasaur being printed out, but it's much easier to kind of reuse this because we don't have to kind of do everything on multiple lines here. Uh, create, you know, create the instance of a class and then assign all of the values. In this case, we can just kind of do it all in once. All right, so this is good, but we haven't really saved that much time, right? Like technically these are still four lines and we had a few lines here, so it's kind of the same. But if we want to create another version of a Pokemon, let's say Charmander, and we go Pokemon Charmander, Charmander, uh, Fire, and... 45. <laughs> I have no idea how much HP Charmander has. Um, well, now we have another version of Pokemon, right? And if we, oh, sorry. And if we print off uh, Charmander.name or Charm.name, we can then see that we get Charmander, right? So now all of the functionality we have defined by creating our class Pokemon is now reusable as many times as we want. So, so far, this is still already saving us some space. But what if we wanted to do something like, rather than just printing out the name of Bulbasaur, we can, we want to actually get the, uh, the attack, let's, which, which let's add on here, uh, self.attack equals attack. See how easy that was? Say 49. Uh, I think it is actually 49. I had to look up this stuff recently. Um, so let's see, let's say that maybe we wanted to be able to print out, um, some kind of thing where we did like this and then we did format and then we did bulb dot, um, attack and then we did bulb dot type, right? So then we're saying that there is an attack, uh, of type grass. So if we run this we can get 49 attack of type grass. Because Pokemon have like resistances and they're stronger, you know, like fire is good against grass and all that kind of stuff. If, if I'm losing you here, it's totally fine. <laughs> uh, but in this case, this would be kind of something that's maybe useful to print out, right? Whether it's for logging or for maybe an adventure game or something like that, this is kind of useful to have. So we can just have this functionality right here, right? And just kind of maybe create another function where you can pass in the attack and the type and then it can kind of do all this for you. But instead, we can create a method within our class. So in order to do that, we can say def and then attack log and then self. Now, a couple of things to note here. Firstly, we can't name this attack because we already have an attribute of attack. So if we had it if we had it like this, you would notice that this is now the same color as this method. And that's because they're now referencing each other. We're basically re reassigning what the attack method was 
to this attack variable. And we're probably going to get an error. So instead, we're going to just say attack log because we're just printing something out. So let's go ahead and print this out um, or format this here. And we're just going to return this value. And we're going to say self.attack, self.type. Now, why is self here? Well, like I said before, on any kind of method within a class, the first value is always self. And again, self can be named whatever you want. But self is really important here because self is referencing the attributes and the other methods within the class. So it allows you to access things like the name, the type, the HP, the attack. Now, if I go ahead and print this here, so I do bulb.attack log, you might be saying, so let's, let's run this. So you can see we, we got the same result here, right? If I change it to charm, we now get of type fire, right? So again, kind of useful because you can just change a single thing and it does everything for you. Pretty sweet. But one thing you might be wondering is we're not actually passing anything to this function, right? I said that this kind of is just here, but like, where does it come from? So the reason it's actually doing this is because when we run our code, the interpreter, which every programming language has some kind of interpreter. And basically what that means is it's just something that will look at your code and figure out how to run it. So in terms of Python, it just looks at exactly what you've written and kind of changes some things here and there so that when it tries to execute it, it knows how to do it. So in the case for print uh, charm dot attack log, basically what it's doing is it's, it's effectively doing Pokemon dot attack charm. Now, what the heck's going on here? <laughs> this is not at all what we typed, right? But these two things are actually the exact same. So the reason this is actually the same is because basically what it's trying to do is when it converts this, it then knows which class it's acting on, right? Then it calls the, the method that we're referencing, so attack log, and then it passes in the instance we care about. So in this case, it's basically passing in all of this information and it's then sending it so that we can use it here. Now you might be wondering, but like, what is this, what is this value, right? If we try and print out charm, we don't actually see anything, right? If I print this out here, we just see main Pokemon, blah, 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 right? Well, actually all these values within here, all these attributes are actually part of a dictionary. So if I do dot underscore underscore dict underscore underscore, we can see that when we print this out, we actually get all of the attributes. So when the interpreter converts our charm dot attack log into this Pokemon dot attack log charm, what's actually happening is it's calling Pokemon dot attack log, which is this function here, and it's passing in our effectively dictionary of charm our object or our class charm to attack log and then that is then considered the self which then allows us to reference any of these variables here so this isn't really something that you really need to worry about as you're programming in python because it doesn't really come up that often but if you're ever curious why do i need to put self there what's it really doing now you know thanks so much for watching in the next video we're going to go over class variables, static methods, and class methods. So it's going to be some good stuff. So stay tuned. And as a quick reminder, please drop a like down below because it really helps out the channel and consider subscribing. Remember, I'm Jake. You're awesome. This has been Python Classes. <laughs> Cheers.